guys, I'm standing next to Candace Parker, new season. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. Um, very excited to be going into my 11th season. This is crazy. <laughs> it goes by so fast, but I think we're slowly getting everybody back from overseas and, you know, I'm ready to get the season started. So you played on Saturday's game, preseason game, the last one of the season of the year. Um, how did you feel out there? How are you clicking with the new faces of the team? I think just adding p different pieces in, um, you know, is always uh, new. Yeah. But, you know, Coach Agler's been there before, and, you know, we just keep on moving. And I think that's the biggest thing this year is with the games coming so fast. Right. We don't have a lot of practice time, a lot of preparation time. So we just have to do with what we have. And, um, you know, obviously we, we know his system. This is his fourth year here. And... So it's just kind of getting reacclimated with it and adding new pieces. And obviously you've spent your entire career here in L.A. How has the culture and just the game in general changed since Coach Aguilar came onto the, into the scene? Well, it's been huge. I think yeah. he's definitely a, a big X's and O's guy. But I think the biggest thing is when you play for a coach that has won a championship. You know, um, he's been there before. He's had what we wanted. And so to win one with him and to win one with this core group of of, um, of Sparks players and obviously to have a GM that has been a part of all the championships that have have come with LA I mean that says a lot so I think as an organization it starts from the top and you know we definitely um, are ahead in that yeah. point and obviously you've accomplished a lot personally um, what are your dreams aside from wanting to win more championships of course like what are you hoping to still gain out of this career that you've set for yourself well I'm hoping game by game um, my daughter's watching and I hope yeah. that she eventually says that she wants to play basketball. <laughs> I hope one day it clicks where she's like, I am going to be 6'5". I could on play basketball. That. Yes, yeah. and there's a jersey waiting for her, um, ready for her to play. So what if she continues on the soccer path that she's on? Then I will support her. Okay. I will support her. Was it just her birthday? It was. Yeah, she just how turned was that? She, it was great. Um, she's getting older. She's awesome. Such a, I'm such a lucky mom that she chose me because she's such an easygoing kid. Yeah, and obviously as a mom and as a role model in general for a lot of people, not just girls, what do you hope to, you know, set for people? I think for me it's just been to be an inspiration and to continue to, to have a positive growth yeah. mindset. You know, I, I don't celebrate when she brings home an A. I celebrate the preparation that yeah. she put in to get that A. Yeah. And so I think that's the biggest thing is don't worry about the results. They'll take care of themselves, right. but just put in the time. Right. And, of course, um, along with the new faces of the team, you have someone like Happy coming on board. Yeah. Um, you and her have been in the league for a very long time. How do you guys learn from each other? You know, we've played with each other uh, a number of times with USA Basketball, playing overseas. I yeah. played with her in Russia for a couple of years. Um, Cappy is one of those people that is so good with the basketball. So I'm excited from a teammate perspective of having another playmaker on the team, another playmaker that has won championships and has had the experience in the playoffs. And I feel like um, her addition is huge for us yeah. just from that, you know, from that standpoint. And of course, you managed to bring back Elena Beard for another year. Um, I know. <laughs> Talk about the impact that she's had, you know, in general for the entire team, but also for you personally. Well, it's so annoying because every year it's like, <laughs> Elena, you know you're coming back. Like, you just won Defensive Player of the Year. So stop, like, trying to act like you're not going to come back. Not being selfish. But anyway, um, no, just from I'm, – I'm a huge believer in the fact that our core, we're close not just on yeah. in between the lines, but – outside the line. So for us, when we're playing, we're playing for our teammates. And she plays for her teammates every day. So when you have somebody on the team like that consistently that gives everything she has and is a veteran and has won a championship, yeah. I mean, you can't go wrong with yeah. that. And Defensive Player of the Year. I know. <laughs> she puts us all to shame. Um, of course, season opener right around the corner against Minnesota. Now that you've had plenty of time to reflect on you know, how things ended, what was your biggest takeaway, the biggest learning lesson? Well, uh, I just was able to watch the game uh, the day before training camp started. I sat down and actually watched game five. That was my first time being able to stomach mm -hmm. it. You know, I, I think for, for us it comes down to taking care of business in the regular season. I mean, everybody talks about it, but home court advantage is a huge yeah. thing. And, you know, that's what we have to focus on. The game one matters just as much as game 34 and game 15 and game 16. So we have to have that same type of energy and not just try to 
make it up at the end. And how do you think that this rivalry has helped maybe, you know, create more excitement in the league and create more viewership? I think it's helped for sure um, create more excitement. I mean, obviously they have us going there while they get their rings. So whatever excitement that <laughs> creates, um, you know, we've we've always opened up against the storm. So I guess it's a good change, I guess. Yeah. But, um, yeah. And of course, you were recently in the news because of a comment that you made out there about, you know, people that hate on WMA or people that normally don't play basketball. Mm -hmm. um, where did that come from? Were you asked about it? And do you have anything else to add on to that comment? You know, I think for me and what I've experienced as a woman, um, as an athlete, is game recognizes game. So if you don't have game, you're not going to recognize it and um, you're going to hate on it. So that's kind of the way that it's been. And you know, there's not many NBA players that don't understand how good Cabby Pondexter's pull up it is or how Chelsea Gray has perfected her step back or NECA's footwork or um, being able to play in transition. So I think game recognizes game and when you don't understand the pure sense of it then you know yeah. what else are you going to do and when you have a lot of time on your hands that's yeah. what you have to do yeah very true and then lastly your message to the fans what do you want to say to them before opening no i would just say uh you know we need you i think la has some of the best fans in in you know in the WNBA, and we need you every night we're going to work hard to make sure that we're playing in the playoffs and we have home credit advantage get us another championship please it's the goal <laughs>